Hey everybody, this is Mick from uh, Brutalitopia here. We are in Chicago with uh, Kevin from Uncle Acid and the Deadbeats. Kevin, thank you so much for taking the time to do this. Um, I know, uh, just to start off, you guys are on the North American leg of your tour right now, um, touring uh, the Night Creeper. Um, just kind of thoughts, because I know you guys are still relatively new to touring the, the States and everything, and just how your experiences have been so far. Yeah, it's been great so far. Um you know the crowds have been really, really good. And, you know it's it's different to Europe, um, but yes, yeah, we we seem to get a good response everywhere we go. So it's it's all good. Have there been any distinct differences that you've noticed, kind of touring North America versus Europe? Maybe sort of North American fans can be a bit more reserved, I think. Uh, but then again, that that varies from city to city. Some fans are crazier in some places, and a bit bit more reserved in other places so it's yeah you know it's different um talking about getting into uh uncle acid the band here a little bit um you guys have uh it's very interesting hearing your sound kind of having that retro kind of vibe of like a 70s kind of like almost like black sabbath in a way i'm sure you've heard that comparison a lot um it's interesting when I ask people about their influences and they say, yeah, we're influenced by this band, but we never really wanted to sound like them. With Uncle Acid, I think it's interesting that it's kind of reverse where it seemed very intentional that you wanted that retro kind of sound. Was that something that was a goal of yours from the get-go with it, or is that just kind of how it turned out? Not really. Yeah, that was just kind of how it turned out. I just I wanted to write songs that I wanted to hear, basically. And I wasn't hearing it from modern bands. I wasn't hearing any good melodies or any harmonies or any sort of riffs that I was that I could relate to. So I just thought, well, maybe I should do it. Maybe I should just come up with something and just mix in all the influences that I have. And it just kind of came out like this, you know. <laughs> are, are there any uh, major influences that you would attribute to kind of the music that you do want to hear? Are there any big bands that stick out for you? I mean, yeah, obviously, like Sabbath, The Beatles, uh, The Kinks, um, Alice Cooper, Wasp, um, I mean, Fleetwood Mac, there's so many, The Renettes, you know, you just kind of take, you know, influence from all kinds of places. You don't even know you're doing it, it just kind of filters through your brain and it comes out in some weird way you know are, are there any influences that uh people might not suspect that kind of plays into it is there like a really far out there one that you really like that kind of plays in uncle acid or i'm not sure i mean the whole girl group thing i think is quite surprising to a lot of people mm. and it to me it's quite present on the new album but a lot of people still can't hear it and it which sort of surprises me you know there's a lot of the oohs and the ahs and you know the girl backing singers and stuff which we have on this album mm. And yet some people still can't hear it, which is kind of strange. But. Yeah. <laughs> um, another thing about Uncle Acid is the uh, the themes of the albums kind of have these uh, very interesting kind of occult uh, vibes and stories really to tell. Um, what was your uh, perhaps interest with, because you know, that's like a, a theme with every album, so there's clearly an interest there for you. What is it about that that really mixes well with the music for you? I think it's more just like a, a cinematic influence, you know, different film genres, like the horror genre for Bloodlust, you know, that we had. It was all inspired by Hammer Horror films. Uh, Mind Control was more sort of 60s American biker, B-movie kind of thing. And then this one's film noir meets giallo, and, you know, it's, so it's just a lot of visual uh, influences that come in. Mm -hmm maybe more so than music sometimes, I don't know. Sure. Do you guys, um, I've only seen you once, and I think that was at MDF when it was kind of like outside and everything. Do you guys have like a video accompaniment with your music, or is that something that you're aiming for eventually? Or Sometimes, but it's kind of played out now. Everybody does it. You know, everybody's putting videos behind themselves, and it's kind of, uh, you know. So, I mean, sometimes we play in complete darkness, which annoys a lot of people. People <laughs> walk out and start complaining, and, you know, it's... Uh, but this time we've we've got kind of a, a dark street alleyway kind of stage set up um, with some Victorian light posts and things. Um, so yeah, it's a little bit a little bit different. Um, talking about um, we we kind of touched on this before we started the interview the the anonymity that you guys had of the band initially when you first started. Um, you kind of said has kind of become like a, a played out joke for you guys in a way. Kind of how has that changed and how do you kind of still play off of that a little bit um I, th I think once you start playing 
like gigs really you know big gigs the whole anonymity thing just kind of goes out the window people can see who you are and it, so it's just you know but yeah I, I like to sort of just have every album my name is listed as something different so mm. it's always extremely confusing for people <laughs> <laughs> try to confuse the fans as much yeah, as possible exactly yeah when people see me they don't know what to say to me they just they think oh what, what's his and then I'm, I'm gone yeah, yeah I'm gone <laughs> Was that an initial intention, just trying to like play different angles like that, or did that just kind of evolve as you went along? I just kind of didn't see the... I mean, we had this thing about the no press pictures and stuff, because I didn't see the relevance of what I looked like to, you know, I didn't see the sort of the relevance to the music, you know, the image and the music, it, to me it should be separate. Um, but yeah, you know, you have to compromise on certain things and... Sure. If you want to get any kind of press, you know you need to have band pictures. You're right. so, you know. <laughs> um, so, is there uh, since we've talked about Uncle Acid sound and it's sounding very retro and having these older influences? Are there um, perhaps newer bands, uh, contemporaries of yours that you listen to and think are really cool that kind of play into it? Or are you just kind of really zoned in on um, older influences? Yeah, most of my influences are older. Um, but I love a lot. I mean, Donova from Portland, the best band in America, in my opinion. Um, Blood Ceremony from Canada, another great band. You know, th- there's a lot of really good bands going at yeah. the minute, I think. Um, I guess just to uh, to wrap up here, I know you guys are about halfway through this leg of uh, the North American tour. Um, do you guys have any plans right after this or anything big like festivals or new music idea? I know the new album just came out, but uh, I'm sure that's something that's in your mind at least, maybe. Yeah, I mean, we're just going to be tour. We're going back to Europe after this, and then Australia, and then hopefully next spring we'll be back in the US, and then obviously the festivals in Europe again next summer, so we're going to be busy. Um, are there any ideas for the... Uh the next album I've, it's one of those things like you have like such vivid stories and imagery that it's I'm just already trying to anticipate what's what's the next uh, idea going to be <laughs> for it I've got a, a, a couple of ideas but I won't I won't say what they are yet but yeah there is there's some ideas in the works yeah. <laughs> um, well I guess as just a final fun question it's uh, very extremely cliched but I'm gonna gonna ask it um, you're trapped on an island you can only have one album for the, to listen to for the rest of your life, what would it be? <laughs> oh my goodness. Um, maybe On the Beach by Neil Young. I think that would be really? the one. Yes, yeah, love that album. Love Neil Young. And if you're going to be on an island, you're kind of on a beach. Yeah. So maybe it kind of works. <laughs> sure. Um, well, everybody, this has been an interview with uh, Kevin or Uncle Ass or whoever he is on this part of the tour <laughs> from Uncle Ass and the Deadbeats. Check out their new album, uh, The Night Creeper, and be sure to catch them on tour if you can. Kevin, thanks so much for doing the interview, man. Thank you very much. Appreciate it.